In this video, I will explain how to do instrumental variables in Stata. Before you watch it, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos called the in instrumental variables and instrumental variables example. And this would be a video about how to do uh, two-stage least squares when we have a single equation and also how to do two-stage least squares and three-stage least squares when we have uh, systems of equations. I have opened up the Stata program and I have already executed it in Stata and you can download the program as well as the data set from my website and follow along. So let's go ahead and open up the data set. This is what we have. It's data on health insurance. And we want to know what affects the log of medical expen expenses. And then we have um, health insurance would be our uh, endogenous variable. And then we would have several exogenous variables, age and log of income and the number of illnesses and log of income would be way here at the back um, right here log of income so this and this is the log of medical expenses would be our dependent variable uh, dependent variable here so that's how the data looks like so we will go ahead and define the different variables and I like using uh, these uh, global lists here so that you can just change those variables and hopefully the rest of the program will work for you. The first thing to define is log of medical expenses and this will be our dependent variable right here. Then Y2 would be our endogenous variable. For us this will be health insurance. Then X1 would be truly the exogenous variables, and I have three. You can have as many as you want to. And then X2 is the list of instruments. And I'm using only one instrument here, the Social Security Income Ratio. And then X2, an alternative list, I'm having two instrumental variables. So here, look, I have one endogenous variable, and for that I will use one instrument. But I have different models for which I'm going to use two instruments. So this will be the case of over-identified system. And I have two more variables, and this is when we use systems of equations. This will be for the second model. I have to have different uh, regressors. So I just picked one of these. And then um, you can have an instrument for the second equation. If you use this instrument for the first equation, I'm going to use this one for the second one. So again, um, you need to pick these variables from what makes sense in your research uh, here. But um, that's how they're defined here. So the next thing to do is describe and summarize the data. And we have again our dependent variable would be log of the medical expenses. Health insurance is a dummy variable, whether or not they have health insurance. Number of illnesses, age, log income, and social security income ratio. And these are the summary statistics. So the first thing to do is an OLS regression. Using regress, you put your dependent variable Y1 here, then the endogenous variable, ignoring that it's endogenous, and then you put the exogenous variables here. And these are the results that we have for OLS. And the way you would interpret this coefficient on the endogenous variable is for one unit increase in X, well, I should say for one unit increase in this Y2, the endogenous variable, we would have that many units increase in the dependent variable Y1. So for people that have health insurance, we have 7.5 percent more in medical expenses because the medical expenses is measured in logs. Okay, uh, so then the next step is to do a two-stage least square estimation and we would use IV regress, two-stage least squares. Here you put Y1, uh, the, the dependent variable first and instead of just putting the 
endogenous variable here like we did up here you see it right right here we would have a model for y2 which is regressed on the instruments which are the x2 and these would be the exogenous variables and comma first means report the results from the first stage uh, estimation not just the second stage so here are the results from the two stage least squares estimation so in the first stage we have the dependent variable is a health insurance and it is regressed on all the exogenous variables plus that was our instrument here so we have all the x1s and this is our x2 the instrument and we have these results so now we get the predicted values from this equation for health insurance and we plug it in here so in the second step this is not the original variable is the predicted values here and then we estimate these using normal OLS and with the with the predicted values here and notice that this is the coefficient here if you scroll up up above that was a very different coefficient so here if you have health insurance then you will be 85.2 percent less like uh, you will have 85.2 percent uh in lower in medical expenses so we have changed the sign when we uh, use the instrumental variables that's a big change from just using a less regression so this was I talked about the OLS and two-stage least square estimation if you want to do the over identified case where you have more than one instruments the syntax is exactly the same except instead of just putting one variable here you would put several variables here and this is um, these are now two instruments that we have here and the over identified case is this is the first stage equation okay and in the second stage equation again we put the predicted values here uh, but we would have um, a different coefficient and that coefficient changed a little bit it's slightly more negative so that just turned out to be the case um, here so you may want to uh, try several instruments and several different combinations of instruments and see how stable your results are now I have a little bit more details on how to do this two-stage least square estimation what we do here in this steps here is identical 100% the same as here but we do it the slow way first thing we regress our dependent variable y2 on the instrument on the instruments x2 and then the exogenous variable then we use the predicted values y hat from this regression right here and then we regress y1 on this predicted values from here y2 and then we keep the truly exogenous variables in the regression okay and this is the slow way of how to do the two-stage least square and you can see that now we have those results are identically the same as the results that we obtained from above so again you can delete that in your program this is just like um, a little demo on how to do it the next thing to do is um, do the Durbin Wu Hausman test of endogeneity and what and what we are doing here is we are estimating the two stage least square from before and then we are just um, doing the test for endogenous for endogeneity and the only thing that's reported here is the Durbin score which is a chi-square statistic and then we have the p-value and we have significance so therefore we have endogeneity here because the now is exogenous and the alternative is that they're endogenous so we we tested these uh, and uh, again the result is we have endogeneity and we need to correct for that using instrumental variables so we can also uh, do it in a different way which is uh, regressing 
our um, endogenous variable on the instrument and the exogenous ones and then we can predict these are the residuals okay uh, you see how it's comma residuals I called this name and then you put this variable right here in the first step which is y1 regressed on y2 and x1 variables and you use the residuals from from this first stage equation and we want to see if those coefficient here is significantly different from zero and we're seeing that actually it is significantly different from zero so using this first stage actually helps uh, correct for for this endogeneity so again that's another reason to use instrumental variables Okay, so the next thing that we, we can do here is test for over-identifying restrictions and we can um, do an IV regress instead of two-stage least squares we would estimate it using GMM and we have the same syntax here as before and then we would look for um, over-identifying restrictions and these are the results here that we have and we have the test statistic and it's not significantly different than zero therefore uh, it's it's okay to use um, to use the instruments and their valid instruments so notice that I put here the alternative list I put all my instruments so here where you define absolutely all of the available instruments that you have you may want to put as many as possible and then see how that um, uh, that actually plays out and if you have that some of the instruments are not valid then you throw them out and if all of them are valid then you keep them in your in your estimation okay so the next thing to do is um, and this is a side step only if you have an endogenous regressor that also happens to be a binary variable as it is the case with us because right now we ignore the fact that our endogenous variable was a zero one variable so we can do better than just doing an OLS for it we can do a probit model if you remember uh, that from the video of the probit and logit models that I have on the website so um, we can accomplish this by using treatment regression and then you put here your dependent variable then you put the exogenous one and then for the tr treatment you have this is the endogenous variable that you have and then you have the instrument and the e exogenous ones so again instead of just doing the predicted values from a simple or less regression it does the predicted values from a probit model which is a better thing for, uh, when using um, using a binary variable and here are the results that we have here and we do have this is now the coefficient here which is uh, different than what we had before actually before it was um, let's see before it was like minus uh, point eight five two or minus 0.970 so this actually changed quite a bit and going more into the negative direction by using a better model for the endogenous variable so that's that's a good one to use if you have a zero one endogenous variable okay so the next thing that we have here is weak in instruments and here we could do a test um, by just using correlation between the endogenous variable and all of the uh, all of the instruments and this is the correlation that I described here it's we can see that it's kind of low it's from 0.1 to 0.25 kind of thing so but it's it's low but not very low so that may not be the case that we have weak instruments using more formal tests what we can do is um, do an IV regress as we had before and then we look at the first stage uh, estimation and look at the summary statistics from the first stage 
and we want to know basically what is this partial F statistic on the instruments. And if that test statistic is greater than 10, we would have um, uh, strong regressors, not, not weak ones. So in this case, if we have, um, I have here only one instrument, the X2 instrument, and here I have both of my instruments, X2 list, the alternative list that I'm using here. And in both cases, we have this test statistic being 0.68 or 0.58, so we have, these are definitely larger than 10, so we would have that of the case that we don't have weak um, instruments. And that's a good thing. We want to have instruments that are strong. The final thing to do here is, what if we don't have just one equation of a dependent variable and an endogenous variable and so on? But we have systems of equation where there's an endogenous variable in one equation that's a dependent variable in another one and vice versa. And here are the regressions that we have here. We have y1 here is the dependent variable as before. We have the endogenous variable y2. We have the exogenous ones x1. And then we have the instruments listed here. Okay, and then we have for the other equation, we have y2. This would now be our dependent variable. This would be an endogenous variable, y1. Uh, we have the variable list for the um, exogenous regressors for the second equation, and then the instruments for the second equation. And notice that these things here, both the exogenous ones and the instruments would need to be different from from the ones in the first um, in the other equation because otherwise you would have the same results between the two stage and the three stage least squares. So the only difference between these two of two stage and th three stage least squares uh, is that we don't have here comma two stage least squares. You see it right here because the default is comma three-stage least squares. So this three-stage least squares estimation is exactly the same as that, as that one, only that it also explores the cross equation, um, the cross equation information uh, for this system of equations. So let's go ahead and look at the results that we have. So these are the two-stage least square estimation here. And we have this, this is the results here. And here is the equation that we had before of log medical expenses on health insurance. And here we have a coefficient of minus 1.67. So we would say that those that have health insurance would have 157% um, lower uh, medical expenses just because it's measured in logs. Okay, so again, we have, this is actually yet the strongest negative coefficient that we found so far. And so for the three-stage least squares uh, estimation, we have uh, that coefficient actually uh, is, isn't as strong as we had up here. But the differences are not that large. And again, I said if you use exactly the same regressors, you see like how I don't have here age and log income into this equation, and we also have different instruments in the two equations. If you if you don't if you just have one instrument in each and the same variables, then you would have the same results. So this is the three-stage least square estimation here that takes into consideration the cross equation information, and we have this is the coefficient on health insurance. So this was how to do instrumental variables in Stata. Thank you for watching.